How many of you drink coffee on a daily basis? I myself love coffee. After much research, I'm going to inform you about the history and the process that coffee goes through to transform it from a bean to a cup. A lot of people drink coffee so much that they don't even realize the history and the information behind it. Coffee actually is, comes from Ethiopia. The word coffee, no one really knows of like exactly where it comes from, but Ethiopia is the home to the Minkira forest and the, is the birthplace of coffee. It is still arguable where the word coffee comes from because coffee in Ethiopia is bana. The discovery of coffee remains a mystery. Ethiopian legend is where coffee was discovered by a goat herder named Kadi. The goat licked, was licking or eating a red fruit of coffee and it became frolicking and was full of energy. And so then the Kadi tried it and he had the same reaction. And so there was a mock that um, he also was like interested in it and tried it and so he took it to his friends and they all had the same reaction and most likely they were reacting to the high dosage of caffeine in it. Now that you know about the origin, let's talk about how coffee came to America. According to Tori Avey, contributor to PBS channel, it reached the new world early in the early 18th century. It became popular, it wasn't popular until the Boston Tea Party in 1733 that is when coffee, uh, tea transitioned to coffee because of a patriotic duty. Coffee also became popular in the Civil War because soldiers drank coffee to stay um, awake during like the training hours and stuff. And another person that made coffee really popular was Teddy Roosevelt. He drank one gallon of coffee a day. Now that you know the history of coffee, let's talk about the production process of how coffee went from a bean to a beverage. It all started with harvesting. It was grown in the mountainous areas, and coffee actually is basically like coffee cherries that are hand-picked, and there's two ways to pick them. You can strip pick them, or you can selectively pick them. Strip picking is like when they take the whole branch of the coffee all at once and by hand or machine, and then selectively picking, they do this, um, they only rip only cherries that are ripe and uh, they are checked eight to 10 days. And then good pickers usually get 100 to 200 pounds of coffee cherries a day. The initial process after they remove coffee seeds from ripe fruit and dry them there are two methods. You have the dry method and the wet method. The dry method is cleaned by hands, spread in the sun, as you can see here in the picture, and is raked or hand turned so that it is dried on every side equally. And this process takes about four weeks. And after they are dried, they then are stored in a silo and sent to the mill. In the wet method, the equi there is equipment and water, and they clean they are cleaned first by hand and then a machine removes the flesh and skin and cleaned, and then it's cleaned again to remove extra pulp. And then they are placed in a large tank and washed again. And then they are dried by the sun or a mechanical dryer and they are sto stored and hold to remove parchment before sale. And then you roast the coffee. This is where the coffee develops its taste aroma along with the brown color. According to coffeeandhealth.org, more than a thousand different aroma components are of coffee. Green coffee beans are heated from 300 to 65 degrees to 464. This makes the, sh the stronger the roasting, the darker, darker the color, and the more intense the aroma and flavor is. As you can see in this picture, 
right here. These are the roasting um, like, like utensils that they use. And they are a horizontal rotating drum that is heated at the bed roast chamber. And it, industry heat, when it's in the industry, is heated with gas or oil. And they are heated and moved by hot air. So they circle. And then they are cooled to room temperature. The coffee beans are then cooled to room temperature and packaged for sale. And they may be grounded it is all um, according to your preference. The next process is grinding the bean which is optional, but will always be done. And it can be done at home. Most, um, the objective of grinding the bean is that you get the most flavor in one cup. The brewing method depends on how coarse or fine. Grinding the, is, um, after grinding, it is ready to brew, and it can be espresso or drip. However, the coffee process cup is up to you. After you learn that in history, and the process, it is obviously there's an entering and mysterious past never truly known knowledge to the origin and where it came from. Harvesting and brewing is a long and tedious but amazing final. And then you learn more in depth information about coffee that I would have never known before. <laughs>